<laughs> Hashtag young gang, I got her again. Mm-hmm. You e- always do. Even even if we take some time off, I mean, we you know, yeah, we, we can still, I can still get you. <laughs> All right, so uh, are you ready to learn some more about Jesus today? Yes, always. Okay, let's mm-hmm. learn some more about Jesus. So last time, I know it's been uh, about a week. You know, we took about a week off, but uh, last time Jesus got all cryptic and spoke in parables Typical. that nobody understood until Jesus walked them through it. He then talked about gardening for a really long time. Uh, people were still confused, so he explained that he wasn't being literal about it, and he explains that some won't understand, but that's because they're possessed by demons. So I mean, that's reasonable, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Demon possession. That's why they (laughs) refuse to understand what Jesus is cryptically saying. Um, (laughs) Some will believe without critically examining the claims, and that is who you should really be focusing on is what Jesus eventually comes to. Okay. Also, uh, he had to speak in parables because the scriptures said that he would. So that's the entire reason why he does. Okay. Scriptures say it for the Bible tells me so. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Now, today, Jesus is going to be healing a lot of people. Great. Yeah. First, uh, he has to tell his followers that they can't follow him, but also be concerned um, with their friends and family. So they, they, they can't follow him and also be concerned with friends and family. Like, you just gotta, you gotta yeet that shit out the window. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jesus then copies Jonah and calms the seas, because, of course, he does. Uh, he then drives a million demons into some pigs, and then he kills the pigs by driving them off a cliff. Um... That was a lot of bacon that went wasted, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Jairus uh, begs Jesus to resurrect his 12-year-old daughter. On the way to resurrecting the daughter, some girl that had been bleeding for 12 years. I don't know how she was able to, I don't know how that works. But anyways, um, she just sort of lightly grazed his cloak or whatever the fuck he was wearing, and mm-hmm. she got healed. Um, and then Jesus told people uh, in his own hometown to fuck off and that he couldn't do any kind of magic there. They were just, hmm. they were sh- they were too shitty. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to take my magic set. I'm going to go somewhere else where people appreciate me. You're going to take your magic to Miami? Yeah. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to take his <laughs> magic and go do it elsewhere. <laughs> Y'all fucking suck. I'm going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys learned something. I know I did. No, I mean, we're going to read the Bible. What? Yeah, you know, we have to do this because we get comments on the channel. It's like, you guys don't know anything about the Bible. Maybe you should try to read it. Oh, shall we? Well, here's a playlist for you. Yeah. So, you know. It's actually the the most popular playlist on the channel. Yeah, well, you know, people love me. What can I say? I I think that's honestly... (laughs) Why the playlist is is as popular as it is. I don't think so. I mean, I think people love hearing from you, but maybe that's just me. (laughs) Guess it depends on who you are. Yeah. What's up, heathens? How How y'all doing? doing? So, um, apparently I got some things wrong, Mm -hmm. which uh, surprisingly I heard, uh, Joe, uh, who came on the show, uh, this past Saturday. Yeah. He actually made it through a couple of Bible studies, which is surprising. He was like, it was hard, (laughs) but I did it. Bless his heart. You know, I d- I have to tell you, Joe said some things that were disappointing to hear from him. You know, it was disappointing to hear. Yeah. Um, and of course, they are things that are common among apolo- apologists. They're common among people who are heavily indoctrinated. Um, but like Joe, I really, really, really want to like Joe. Like Joe seems like a really cool, chill guy. Mm-hmm. But then he says something that's so horrifying and I'm just like, oh. Uh, leveling up. <laughs> sorry, sorry, that was my glucose freaking out. So I don't know. It was just um I, I do I do have to say though, I respect that he went to your channel and took the time to watch some of your content. And you know that he actually also uh with your your uh, Friday night response that you did to him uh to his video about um how to um what was it, how to do how to what? Oh, uh, proselytize to atheists or how to witness witness, how to witness to atheists. And so like I did appreciate that he listened to your I don't know, I guess we'll call it feedback. <laughs> Well, I don't know if response. that's what you do. I don't know if that's what you do on Fridays is feedback. <laughs> 
but uh, he that he listened and he actually absorbed some of it and he and he considered like oh well maybe I am doing something wrong and he you know he took the he he actually took the time to listen and consider mm-hmm. that maybe he's not doing it in a way that's effective right um and then reached out to you to talk so I mean I, I do I have I have some respect in in that sense for him and I appreciate that he did that and. I also think one of the things you guys talked about in your in your um, discussion was that uh, possibly doing response videos because he doesn't like some of the Christian apologists either, mm-hmm. which kind of surprised me because some of the shit he says is exactly what they say. So, but he's not a fan of William Lane Craig, and you know, I, I don't know. I think it would be kind of funny to you know, kind of interesting to see the two of you respond to some of these things together to get your different perspectives on it and stuff that he also has a problem with. You know, mm-hmm. so I just I think that would. Be be an interesting thing to maybe do in the future. Yeah, that would be kind of interesting, I guess. Uh, he doesn't seem like a bad guy. No, but I did give him an awesome nickname. You did. ZZ Comfort. I know. That was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> because, look, the guy has a really nice beard. Like, I mean, I can definitely, I can appreciate a nice beard. He's got a nice one. He does. And so I, w- I was definitely not trying to be antagonistic when I compared his beard to ZZ Top. Yeah. It's just that, you know, he's got a nice full beard, so I don't know. Anyways, but but yeah, he he prefers the Ray Comfort way of arguing things, so that's why it's easy. <sighs> ZZ Comfort. <laughs> Come on, Joe. I'm rooting for you, man. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> uh, as far as the uh, podcast, though, the Bible study today. But on to the, you know, podcast for today. We're today, talk- we're, today we're doing miracles. Miracles. Jesus. Woo! G- woo! We got some Jesus miracles that we're yeah. going to be going over, uh, which um, if you're paying attention to the actual Gospels, uh, I think we're starting in Matthew 8 and Luke 9. Middle of Luke 9 or end of Luke 9, something like that. Yeah, so today we have Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I don't think we have any John today. Um, mm, no, I mean, Jesus is pretty, like, he doesn't he doesn't do the same miracles in John that he does in uh, elsewhere because, you know, John was like, fuck you guys. I'm going to do my own <laughs> I'm thing. I'm going to do my own shit. I go my own way. Um. So, yeah, we've got some Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And as, so, as some of you who listen regularly may know, but any new listeners may not, we're reading from the uh, Daily Bible, which is the Bible in three, 360, broken up into 365 day increments mm-hmm. um, and done chronologically in time as best they can figure out some of that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, at least how, the, how they think of it as chronologically um, to tell the story. Instead of telling it by book, mm-hmm. they pull the story together because, you know, especially in the Old Testament, you have this stuff in the New Testament too, where you have some similar aspects in, you have the same story in different gospels mm-hmm. or similar, but with additional details or whatever. In the Old Testament, you have similar kinds of things where you have um, the prophets talking about things in one book and then it's happening in a different book and like you've got it so it puts it all together in a way that's easier to actually read the story right yeah so that's why while we're doing we're, we're it's kind of as time goes on so now we're doing we're at miracles and um we have some matthew mark and luke so are you ready to go ahead and start oh yeah i'm definitely ready for this magical shit okay so the first thing jesus is going to do is challenge his followers which i think is something that still is common amongst christianity is for the christian challenger the 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 followers to be challenged right yeah so i guess i don't know like that um in my my experience, mm-hmm. a, a lot of Christian like preachers and pastors and everything like that, they really don't like you to think critically about anything. It's more of a listen and believe deal. But that is fair, and you know, in my experience, quite true. Um, mm-hmm. I used to go to um, Bible study with my um, with my grandmother when I was younger, and she was Southern Baptist, and I used to get in trouble. I wasn't allowed in the kids' class after a while because I asked too many questions. Um, so they put me in my grandma's class and I asked too many questions. Yeah, and well, then, go ahead. It, well, I was just going to say, uh, I don't think, um, you know, what when you hear challenge, like him challenging his followers, it's not like he's challenging them to think critically about no, the right, things yeah. he's saying. It, he's ch- he's challenging them in a different way. Yeah. So I I don't know. I, I guess I initially started responding like it was like chat, like chat, like I'm going to challenge the followers to like think about this kind of shit but that's definitely not what he means so I was a little wrong 
Well, I mean, he's going to challenge him in various ways. He does challenge him to think about shit, just um, it, not in the same way we would consider like critically thinking about something, right? Right. Um, but he, I think he does challenge his followers to think about things differently than they currently do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You ready to go? Yeah. This is kind of like the cinnamon challenge, but for religious religion. <sighs> don't do the cinnamon challenge. You can choke and die. Cinnamon, just don't. It's just not worth it. The, I've also seen people do it with a cocoa powder. Mm-hmm. Don't do that either. That's really dangerous. You can breathe that shit and just don't. Y'all remember when people were setting themselves on fire as right. a challenge? Yeah. People would people would douse themselves with some kind of accelerant, and then they set themselves on fire. And that was some kind of fucking challenge. They'd do it in a shower. So, like, they'd set themselves on fire and then turn on the shower and put themselves out. But not everybody was thinking that way. That is so stupid. You know, should have seen the look on her face. It was like, an, uh, it was like if you could imagine a, a face where it's, like, unbelievable. Like, I cannot believe people were doing that. What are you? talking about i mean if you if you search on the internet through google ta- uh, like the set yourself on fire challenge or whatever the fuck it was called but people were doing it the lawyers want to tell people don't set yourself on fire for a challenge or any other reason yeah unless of course you're making a movie and you've got safety staff and everything and like that's like it's like a stunt that's happening but it's planned and they're professionals that know what they're doing yeah that's fine i guess <laughs> i guess <laughs> If you have the need to set yourself on fire, go find a job that allows you to do it, I guess. Safely. <laughs> to do safely. it safely. Okay, but anyways, let's let's get to okay. G- Jesus, Jesus challenging his followers. And the miracles. Okay. Yeah. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake because that side of the lake is better than the side of the lake they were standing on for some reason. <sighs> yeah, fuck this side of the lake. Mm-hmm. This is like east side, west side sort yeah. of beef kind of thing. Yeah, they were definitely T- on the wrong side of the lake. Yeah, Tupac's going to be, you know, rowing across the Sea of Galilee <laughs> and then see, you know, uh, Biggie... <laughs> Is gonna be in a much bigger boat, you know, because reasons. Biggie. Yeah, yeah. bigger, and the, they're gonna walk. They're they're gonna row past each other, and it's like. <laughs> Y'all didn't. Sorry, I forgot. This isn't on video. <laughs> just, just imagine somebody with a smoldering look, just giving like stink eye hard. That's like to the West Coast. It's like, uh, where are you from? West Coast, West Coast Sea of Galilee. Where are you from? East Coast. Oh, fuck. Now we got a beef. So they anyway, they have to go to the other side of the lake because they're on the wrong side. Yeah. Uh, then a teacher of the law came to him and said, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus cool. was like, bitch, I'm farting. So... <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. I'm going to crop dust you. That's not what he said. You ready? You ready for what he said? What? This is in Luke. He said this in Luke. Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. <laughs> <laughs> get a job and get an apartment. Fuck. Well, I mean. Go stay at a friend's house. Yeah. Go back to your mama's. I mean, this just, I, I if somebody replied to me like this. I just I don't know the son of the son of man has no place to lay his head. It's like well foxes have homes and birds have homes. I mean can't you just find like a soft patch of grass and lay in it there, Jesus? Where is my home? I don't know where my home is. Go lay in a cave. I don't know. I mean, I mean the last time he was in a cave, he resurrected. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tomb, not a cave. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, anyway, he said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Seems reasonable, right? I got to wrap up some shit at home and then I'm coming, right? Yeah. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. I don't know exactly how dead are supposed to bury dead, but I guess what he was telling this guy is let your dad rot mm-hmm. and come with me now or else you're bad i guess right i guess i don't know i don't know what jesus is trying to say here other than (laughs) you've got responsibilities i'm the only responsibility you should have bitch your priorities are messed up sir and then he does that little snap let let z it's like bitch follow me fuck your family Okay. Otherwise, just, I don't even want to hear it. This isn't the first time he's told someone to leave their family. Mm -hmm. I mean, I realize the guy's dad's dead, but I I feel like it's not unreasonable to allow someone to wrap shit up at home before you go out on your journey. Like, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, Anyway, uh, another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Oh, here we are. Uh, So Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So you can't look back. You Mm -hmm. can't go back and plow your family. 
Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I, I feel like that is something that's maybe commonly said in Mississippi and Alabama. <laughs> so he doesn't want this guy to go back and say bye to his family either. Um, okay, let's continue on. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Jesus Christ. Is this like musical fucking sides of the lake mm-hmm. or river? Are we lake or river right now? Lake. Uh, yeah. Well, I think this is the Sea of Galilee that they're traversing. Okay, all right. Um, Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. (laughs) Must be nice. The disciples woke him and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? I don't know. Grab a fucking bucket and start, you know. Help your fucking self. God damn it. Jesus. He... (laughs) He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. Oh. uh, You mean to finish the story? Yeah. Yeah. Finish the story. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. I love how they act like they don't know who the fuck he is. (laughs) Okay. Yes. So uh, this particular section, which appears in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Right, all all of this is in uh, in in the synoptic gospels, but um, this is actually taken from the story of Jonah. Yeah. Uh, so, like, it, 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 there's a lot of things that are said in this section that are linguistically tied to Jonah, like in the Septuagint version of of Jonah. That's how we know that the uh, Jonah story inspired this story is because in the Greek, the there are phrases that like exact phrases and everything like that that are said in both stories which the amount of similar phrases that appear in both stories makes it unreasonable to think that you know the Jonah story wasn't pulled from so like mm-hmm. um here's here's the relevant section if, if do you mind if i read from Jonah just to sort of no, absolutely. compare and contrast okay so if you go back to Jonah 1:4 uh that's where like this story is taken from um it says, then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea uh, and such a violent storm arose that uh, that the ship threatened to break up. All of the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God and they threw the cargo into, into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Perish. Then the sailors said to each other, come, let us cast lots to find out who's responsible for this calamity, which seems like a dipshit way to blame somebody. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble for us. What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? And he answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them. And they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told him so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, what should we do to make uh, to you to make this sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that that is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. They cried out to the Lord, please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for, uh, for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, Lord, have done as you please. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. And at this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Uh, so now, obviously, that's a, a big section, and it's got a lot of stuff in there that doesn't appear in the Jesus story. But the the important part right here is like, well, Jesus was down in the in the ship, mm-hmm. and he was laying down, and he was sleeping during the the storm. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole uh, teacher, do you not care if we drown? That's a similar thing that pops up in the Jonah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Jesus being the Lord or being an agent of God, he's the one that can quiet the sea, just like Jonah being thrown into the sea. 
Yeah, Jesus just it. Jesus just had to do it better, right? Because right. he's the Messiah. So Jonah, uh, the way he did it was being, I guess, sacrificed to the sea. Right. And Jesus could just tell the waves to stop. Right. And of course, you know, all of the disciples being terrified and all this other mm-hmm. stuff, saying, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him and everything like that. So, I mean, that's similar to how the sailors reacted. So there's a lot of, and, and this is, of course, uh, both of these are the new international version. So you're not going to, don't expect to see direct like phrase, you know, uh, comparisons here, like between the two. Right. It's in the Greek that you find the phrases that are similar. Yeah. So anyway, sorry, I just had to go on about that. No, that's fine. Are you ready to continue on to the next section? Yep. We're going to, we're going to talk about the demon possessed. You ready? Oh, I love demon possession. Yeah. I mean, they make good movies. (laughs) Just (laughs) about. You said they make good movies and I'm sitting here thinking like they make good exorcisms. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, <laughs> like the church people doing the demon. Uh, yeah, Bob. Oh, what's his name? Oh, Bob. I don't remember, but he does the Jezebel exorcisms and there's. So yeah, ridiculous. he dre- he dresses like he's a Catholic, but he's not a Catholic. Yeah. That threw me off because I'm like, he looks like a Catholic, but he's not actually Catholic. There's I can't remember. The, there's a denomination that also wears collars that uh, that's not Catholic, but it's cl- I can't remember who does it. Anyway, you ready to move on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this demon possessed uh, Garris. Garris Mm -hmm. is, uh, I don't know, is it Gerasene or Gerasene? I think you could probably pronounce it either way, but I think it's Gerasene. Okay. Uh, This story is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, okay? Okay. All right. So they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. um, And when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. You know, God can't even mess with iron. No, God can't fuck with iron. Yeah, so that's pretty pretty, uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. It seems like this guy needs some mental health care. Yeah, I feel like mental health care is what he needs. But at this particular time, demons. Demons, yes. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice. How would he know who this guy was? Well, so the whole idea is that the demons knew who Jesus was. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to get there, right? I remember now. We're going to get there. Okay. Uh, He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. Oh, this is my stepmother. (laughs) (laughs) And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. Mm -hmm. A large herd of pigs was feeding on a nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. Seems weird. Yeah. Uh, He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were Around. You know, what I find interesting is that why are these demons? And, and I, so I feel like the people's reaction is valid and we're going to get to that. But like, why are these demons listening to Jesus? I don't, I, I guess because God commands all. I think so. And, and I mean, like Jesus being like the firstborn son of God, mm-hmm. like he, like he's the, he's the person that can, man, that can command demons or can defeat demons. I think that it's supposed to be like, you know, uh, G- Jesus is the only one that can defeat Satan and death and and all this other stuff. And so they just, they bow to him. Yeah. Right. Um, but uh, in- interesting enough, uh, I had a debate with a guy, David Mersh, mm-hmm. who tried to suggest that this particular section is a cryptic um, telling of a Israel Israelite um, like um, revolution against the uh, Roman occupation of some city, and that like the the pigs are the Roman legion, uh, and of course the demon's name is Legion. But th- th- he said that the the pigs represent the Roman legion and Jesus commanding them and driving them off the hillside is is the Israelites revolting against the Roman occupation which okay. I don't I don't know of any like actual historical evidence that any of that happened yeah this, that was what I was gonna ask is there is there any historical reason why he would believe that I mean I'm not saying that that can't be accurate I just I don't I don't know of, know of any of course There's, I'm not an expert in history well so. in order in order for him to make that and y'all can go and watch the 
the debate because it's on my channel. It's also on Jacob Berman's channel. Channel that's where I had the debate at. And um, but he basically has ad hoc speculation mm -hmm. to connect like the pigs to the boar that appeared on a certain shield of a certain Roman uh, like group. Mm -hmm. Like le it was like a legion of Roman soldiers, and it, this particular legion had a boar on as their like crest or something like that. And so he's saying, oh, this means that. And it's like, well, you don't have any like actual evidence to suggest this. I mean, that seems reasonable if there was any evidence to support it. That mm -hmm. that's, doesn't seem like this is a story, right? So it doesn't seem unreasonable that they would change things a little bit to make the story more. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like that's done in other stories we've seen. You know, well, it also so. it also um, totally ignores the theological aspect of this story mm -hmm. because there's a theological reason for telling this. It's, oh it's, yeah, we're gonna get there, right? Yeah, we just haven't because we cut. We keep, I keep talking too. Much. Well, I mean, I keep talking too. So, <laughs> anyways, I'll, I'll let you continue. But they're, they're like to to suggest. Oh, they made this story up to be like a a cryptic uh, acknowledgement that that Jesus led a revolt against the Romans. I don't know why they wouldn't just say that. Well, yeah, th th their their whole idea is that Christians were persecuted and they wouldn't let them write anything down about their history. Oh. And so they had to cryptically write about it, which is kind of funny because a lot of people claim that I'm like a conspiracy theorist because I don't think Jesus existed. But at the same time, they have actual conspiracy theories because that's what this sounds like. Is like Yeah, a but I mean, theory. the idea that people write cryptically because they're not allowed to write about something in a particular way wherever they live, like they're persecuted where they live, so they're not allowed. The idea that they would write cryptically or write a story that that would be so, so there was some way for them to um i don't know document their history or things that happened to them or whatever that seems reasonable i mean that's not totally unreasonable to think well i mean considering all of the other christian documents that it existed Fair. at this time yeah you know, because you've got, you know, Paul, if that were the case, mm -hmm. it seems like Paul wouldn't be able to write like That's any of true. his letters or anything like that. So it just seems very special pleading mm -hmm. considering all of the, all well, the other Perhaps this was a story older, but like I mean, from, if it's about the Romans, it couldn't be that much older. Right. You know, it, I well, I mean, I'm not saying that it's impossible for this to have been the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I generally reserve belief in something until I can see evidence. And right sure, now, totally agree. You know, right now, I just, I don't see any real evidence. It's like there was evidence of like connecting the, you know, pigs in a story to the boar on the shield of this one mm -hmm. Roman legion. Like if there were other examples of that, then uh, it, it's it's possible and maybe a little plausible, but I just don't see that anywhere in our history. So in the histories that we have. Yeah. I mean, this sound, if it, that kind of thing, connecting it like that kind of sounds more like um, how prophecies kind of work like um uh, nostradamus and he yeah. you know when he would say something and he will um cross a lion or something like that and it's a flag with a lion not an actual lion you mm -hmm. know what i mean like well there, there's that and people twist nostradamus into like predicting 9-11 and stuff like oh that sure no i don't stuff. i don't mean any of that kind of stuff i just oh, okay. mean how how prophets kind of speak where they they say something but they don't necessarily mean it's not it doesn't mean exactly what you think it means like right. right on the surface. Cause you think if somebody says he will cross a lion or he will fight a lion, mm -hmm. you think he will fight a lion, but turns out they fight somebody like some, um, human enemy that has a lion on their flag or something like that, you know, and that's, right. they're, they're telling a prophecy and say, when he meets the lion, he will blah, blah, he'll fall or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. And so that's kind of how prophecy is, is told. Yeah. Kind of. So I don't know that kind of, th that's why to me, it seems like it's not totally out of the realm of possibility, but it's not something I'm going, I would, I wouldn't claim it without any kind of evidence, right. but some of the things kind of seem reasonable. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the pigs rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned, right? Mm -hmm. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed in his right mind. And they were afraid that I would have been afraid of him before. He's probably fine now. <laughs> Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. That seems like a weird reaction. This guy just rid your land of apparently thousand, two, 2,000 demons or something. Mm -hmm. And like... <laughs> I and you want him to leave? Yeah. I'd be like, stay and find the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
and as Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell the Decapolis uh, how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Um, the Decapolis is 10 cities. So apparently he told 10 cities about it. Okay. Yeah. But nobody wrote anything down about it at the time. Obviously not. Yeah, because I mean, reasons. who would do that? I don't know. Like people documenting history or something. <laughs> um, okay. So that's the end of that story. You got anything else on that before we move on to uh, J- Jairus? J- no. Is oh, right? Jairus. Is that hey Jairus? Mm-hmm. Jairus. Okay. Makes me think of gyrate, which starts with a G, and that's why. <laughs> J- Jairus. Okay. This story, uh, for everybody's knowledge, is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke as well. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, Jesus. Why is he going back and forth and back and forth? This is ridiculous. Well, I mean, it's easier than going around the lake, you know, going across the lake. I, I don't know why he has to keep going back and forth. I'm sure that the disciples would have been like, Jesus, fuck, can you not just figure some shit out? <laughs> A large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pled earnestly with him, "My little daughter is dying. Please come with your ha- please come and put your hands on her, so she will be healed and live." So Jesus went with him. Uh, a for now, that's it of that story. We're, we'll get back to Jairus uh, one moment. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. What is there, some kind of fuck? And meter. I guess. Some of his fucking lightning bolts went out to her and he he noticed. Mm-hmm. That's dumb. Uh, he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You'd think he'd know he's God, right? Yeah. You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. It's weird. He seemed so upset about it. But then like, he was like, cool, it's fine. Right. All this is fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to Jairus. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, John saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed at him. After putting them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Koam, Jesus. Is that how you say that? I think so. I don't, I think this is um, maybe, uh, what is it, like Coptic or something like that? Anyway, it means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began walking around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told her to give told them to give her something to eat. And that's how we know it happened and exactly what happened in the room because he told them to tell no one. (laughs) Well, uh, interestingly enough, uh, if y'all want to know more about how these miracle stories are definitely like fabricated and how they're pulled from the Old Testament and stuff like that, um, pick up Randall Helms's book, Gospel Fictions, that has been like a a well of knowledge for doing a compare and contrast between the Old Testament and the New. So this is a... um, I forget what it's called. There's a certain literary device that, that, is used right here in this particular story. And it's going to crop up again later. Um, and, and there's, it's used all over the gospels, but basically it's inserting a, a story inside of a larger story. Mm-hmm. Right. So the main story here is, is that Jairus comes to get Jesus so that, you know, he can heal the daughter. The daughter actually dies, but Jesus resurrects her. Right. This is um, mimicking uh, stories from Elisha and Elijah. Mm-hmm. Both of them resurrect small children yeah. whose parents, 
audience were grieving and asked the prophet for help. Mm -hmm. But what they do is they insert another story in the midst of telling this story. Mm -hmm. The 12, the girl that had been bleeding for 12 years Mm -hmm. simply touched and believed in Jesus and, um, you know, was healed. Um, now it's, it's, it's a bit coincidental. It's, it's more than coincidental. It's unreasonably coincidental that the girl had been bleeding for 12 years. And then Jesus goes on to resurrect a 12 year old girl with, you know, 12 is a magical number sure. in uh, the Bible. 12 uh, disciples, 12 tribes of Israel. Right. Tw- tw- 12 is a very big number, just like um, there are other ones. Uh, 40 is a magical Seven. number. Seven. Three. Three, yeah. The, so there's a lot of magical number play at this, but it it's important to know that like not only is the story copied from the Old Testament, but also there's an uh, there's a theological reason surrounding all of this, and that's just you know believing in Jesus, and that has the power to heal people, mm-hmm. uh, because that's what both of these stories have in common, and that's why they're they're constructed in the way that they are. So this this did not actually happen. Okay, are you ready for the next miracle? Yep. This one is only in Matthew. Yeah. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. That's another one of those things. If you believe, you'll be healed. Now, if they Mm -hmm. had not earnestly believed, they wouldn't have been healed. Right. Yeah. Jesus warned them straight. Sternly, see that no one knows about this. Oh, now they can see, so it's fine, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but they went out and spread the news all about him over that region. Yeah, but you know, this is uh, Jesus and Mark is really wanting to downplay it. So that's why that's why he always says, "Hey, don't go and tell people I did this." But you need to show yourself to a priest or something like that. But then, as you get as the gospels progress, you see Jesus being more go and more and tell. open. Yeah, t- tell everybody about my shit. I'm a magical motherfucker. Uh, so blind can see now. Also, only in Matthew, mute to speak. Okay. Mm-hmm. While they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, it is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. Mm. So now they're saying he can control them because he's he, he's a prince of demons. Well, I mean, if he was a prince, like if he was the devil, right, the mm-hmm. sa- Satan, mm-hmm. he, I would think that he would be able to control demons, but all... But but also that this isn't really a good argument against Jesus's like um, God, not Godhood, but um, status as son of God. Mm-hmm. Because if, if Jesus is the son of God, then he would also have control over demons. Mm-hmm. So this really is, this is a non, non-starter. They're just argument. trying to make him look bad. Yeah, they're being bitches is what yeah. they are, fuckers. Yeah, so um, uh, this next portion is in Matthew and Mark, uh, and this is going to be the last part we're going to read today um, where Jesus gets rejected. Okay? Jesus yep. left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples, which we know he didn't grow up in his hometown, right? He couldn't. Right. Yeah, he was, uh, well, I mean, it kind of depends on which particular gospel. Uh, since this is uh, is also occurring in Matthew, then mm-hmm. no, like as a ch- his childhood town mm-hmm. no because mm-hmm. in Matthew he grew up in Egypt right but Mark he grew up in Nazareth okay uh, so he was accompanied by his disciples they went to his hometown when the Sabbath came he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed where did this man get these things they ask what's this wisdom that has been given him where are these what are these remarkable miracles he is performing isn't this a carpet the carpenter isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James Joseph Judas and Simon aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. There's a very important distinction to be made here. Okay. Okay. So in in Mark's gospel, it literally says he could not do any miracles there, Mm -hmm. right? But when you get to Matthew's gospel, Matthew doesn't like the fact 
that Mark has portrayed Jesus as not being able to do something, Mm -hmm. right? So because Matthew doesn't like that, he changes it a little bit, saying that he chose to do no miracles there. Mm, Because they didn't have faith. Right, because they they didn't have enough faith or whatever. But the important distinction is is that like the gospel writers, if they thought something was embarrassing or they didn't like something or thought that it painted Jesus in a negative light, Mm -hmm. they changed it. Just like here, they didn't like that he could do no miracles, so they made it he chose to do no miracles. This is an important distinction because a lot of apologists will try to say that like, well, they wouldn't have made up that women found the tomb empty because because women weren't trusted. It's like, well, if that were the case, then they definitely would have changed it. Yeah. You know what this reminds me? <laughs> you know in uh, you know in the movie Elf? I know this is like a really... <laughs> You sit on a throne of lies. <laughs> so in the movie Elf, you know how the sleigh can't fly? The sleigh can't fly, even though Santa's magical and the mm-hmm. reindeer are magical. The, the the sleigh cannot fly if people don't believe. Yeah. And so this is, I mean... I mean, I'm not trying to trivialize it, but that's what it reminds me of because Jesus is God. And you mean to tell me that if people don't believe he's powerless? I mean, it works like Tinkerbell. To be fair, to be fair, this is one of the most rational things that they've said. Their God is completely powerless without their faith in him Mm -hmm. because he's made up. Right. Right. So this God would have like this, this God, these stories would have no power without his people. Of course, they would say he's outside of everything thing and that he created everything. But the fact that they, that in, at least in Mark, he's saying without their faith, he cannot heal anything because they don't believe. They right. don't, it, it's kind of like um, townspeople believing that they're healed because of snake oil salesman. The snake right. oil salesman doesn't actually have any power, but if they believe, then they feel like whatever they were, was ailing them was gone, even if it isn't. Right. It's a placebo. Yeah. And so, you know, you get all these, you know, all these people together and all this energy going and whatever. And then you've got this placebo effect of something and they think that they're healed, but they're not. Yeah. And so it's, it's kind of one of those things. And to liken him to that, I mean, I think I understand why Matthew wanted to change that because it seems very strange to say that this all powerful son of God being has no power if they don't believe he does. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the most reasonable thing we've read today. (laughs) Anyway, Anyway, that's the end of today's reading. Okay. Next time, um, Jesus is going to send out the apostles, right? Right. There's too much work for him to do on his own. So he, he, the, the apostles are given the power to heal so that they can go out and do his work. And he instructs them on what they need to do. Um, warns them, you know, gives them some warnings about this whole thing. Um, we're going to have some conflict going on next, next time and some sacrifice. So let's remember that. Um, he's going to talk about the apostles being received and some stuff about what they're doing. Um, and we're going to hear a little bit about Herod okay. next time. Okay. Cause Herod is curious about Jesus. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And one of the big characters in our story dies next week. I'm not going to tell you who, okay. Okay. But one of our big characters dies. Um, so we've got to deal with that. And then the apostles return to Jesus and report to him um, their, what what happened to them, what they did. Okay. All right. So that's what we're going to do next time. Awesome. Then the week after that, we're going to have some more miracles. Awesome. More yeah. miracle work. Great. Okay. Well, uh, we would really love to hear what y'all thought about today's Bible study. So if you will, please go down below in the comment section down below and leave us your thoughts. We always love hearing feedback from people most of the time. Uh, but while you're down there, why don't you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of Bible study. And don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens. Bye, y'all.